United Against Cancer. Yes. Dr. Ziba Aziz uh, is an expert oncologist with 21 years, is that correct, of experience, and one of the best oncologists in, in Lahore with a very high patient satisfaction rate. Very important. Um, apart from her basic diagnosis, uh, her basic qualifications, she has expertise in the diagnosis and treatment of different kinds of cancers, such as lung cancer, skin cancer, brain, breast cancer, and serves in different oncology departments for years, treating all kinds of cancers. She provides personalized cancer treatment plans for patients of all groups, and her advanced technology makes her one of the top certified oncologists in Lahore. Uh, and belongs to organizations such as the Hamid, tell us which one is that? Hamid Latif Hospital? Yeah. And yeah, so, so well done for all the fantastic work that you're doing and remaining in your country and giving back to the uh, organization, to the country generally. So today I want to start by asking you to tell us about your journey into oncology, hematology, and in particular, what inspired you? Uh, by the way, I'm a pediatrician background, and it was after I had finished and spent all those years to qualify as a pediatrician, I developed an interest in oncology from the side of um, the awareness, from the, I, it was a response to my people and the fact that there was such low awareness. So I wonder if you can share uh, some of what inspired you and your journey into hemato-oncology. Dr. Aziz, over to you. Thank you, Dr. Zainab. Uh, basically, I can't, I'm not sure, but uh, my father ha had blood cancer when I was very young and I joined medical school. He died while I was in my first year, but he's the one who said that since uh, medical oncology and hematology are in their infancy, you have to work hard and make sure that you see the progress and do some research work in it. Now, having said that, that was one of my drives. And uh, after... Passing my mm. MBBS, I went to the United States and I got a tr got my training there in internal medicine, hematology and oncology and got my boards. But I came back. When I came back to Pakistan, like any low middle income countries, medical oncology and hematology were in their infancy, as you know what it was. Uh, hardly, yeah. there yeah. were hardly, there were very few drugs available. And the patients were mixed, misdiagnosed and they were treated wrongly. Or, and every one of them were told that, you know, you're not going to live and the symptoms are uh, treatment is mainly palliative, which even at that time, I mean, you could treat certain breast cancers, early breast cancers and stuff, Hodgkin's and stuff. But that was the major problem. Basically, there were hardly any medical oncologists and hematologists in Pakistan. And then there was no woman. I was one of the first women to do, <laughs> go into academic practice, academics and into practice as a medical, uh, a medical hematologist, oncologist. And the journey Fantastic. for a woman is very difficult. Very, very, mm. very difficult. Okay. So uh, looking at retrospectively, it was hard work. It was a lot of challenges. And my family and my husband were, shared a second seat versus medical hematology, oncology, and my dreams, which were my first option. So uh -huh. that is the way it was, but it is much better now. It is, it's martial law improved really well. Excellent. And, so uh, this, yes. is, this, this story is one that you hear from women in medicine, women in All science, over. and women in oncology. Yes. So uh, but we're over. glad that. As the, as the years go by, it's getting easier, it's getting better, there's more support, there's more focus on the 
fact that not only can women lead effectively, they can go into all specialties and they can do well with the right type of support. And once you're over the bumpy parts, then it becomes much easier. Much so easier. Th obviously, this, this, this was a challenge, but if we go specifically to hematology and oncology uh, training and practice in Pakistan, what would you say are the general challenges and the more specific ones in practice uh, for uh, hemato-oncology in your country? Uh, you know, when, uh, there are two types of challenges. One, once, we, once I came back and there were a couple of other people who had come back, we approached the College of Physicians and Surgeons Pakistan to make hematology oncology a subspeciality of internal medicine, as a result of which we have a very robust training program now in Pakistan for postgraduate yes. students in medical oncology and hematology. Secondly, the challenges were there of diagnosis, early diagnosis, treatment, supportive care. I mean, everything which you see in low middle income countries. But gradually, over a period of time, I think with education, with more knowledge, things have improved substantially. But it is for a marginalized poor patients that I feel mm -hmm. that, yes, treatment is there, but lack of insurances, lack of access to cancer centers, uh, illiteracy, these are common to all of our people. And these are the people who, uh, who have more cancers, they come with advanced disease and they're not curable. And they're the ones who suffer the most because they are pushed more and more into poverty by the cost of treatment. treatment. On the other hand, on the other hand, the rich people get more access to treatment. They do have early diagnosis. And we, we've looked at a couple of, uh, I published a couple of articles and we are looking at some now that socioeconomic status is one of the most important factors related to survival mm -hmm. in, in our countries. I'm yeah. not talking mm -hmm. about UK or North America, but even in North America, if you look at the data, they are stating that uh, you uh, social inequities do exist coming from a poor oh, yeah. neighborhood. <laughs> Definitely, yes. There's a this there's there's disparity in country disparity. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So this so is that's what it is. But, the, uh, but things right. have improved. We have MRIs. We have our CT scans. We do have uh, PET scans in a couple of places, and it's not a problem because if if you have a PET CT, you don't need it in every hospital. If you have it in four or five hospitals, yeah. you get you can get done. Uh, our pathology yeah. labs are good, but generally there are three or four good labs. And we send all our pathology slides there to be reviewed for special stains, immunohistochemistry and everything else. So I can't complain that much. We don't have access to the newer drugs uh, like uh -huh. T cells or this or that, but such is life. There's some things which you have, some things which you don't. Um, Bone marrow transplant is there in a couple of places, but patients, fortunately or unfortunately, don't. Go. Too many patients don't go, either because of lack of refer uh, referral or upfront cost of the treatment. So that's that's uh, interesting and good to well, some good, some not so good to hear. Yeah, but yeah. It's obvious that there has been progress, and so there's not uh, much local manufacturing because I know manufacturing is one of the key areas that Pakistan has tried. Yes. Do you have local manufacturing of chemotherapy? Do, yeah, yeah. There is local uh, manufacturing, but very limited. And I very feel this is something, yeah, I'm not sure why that is the problem because we do have some, some good pharmaceuticals here. Uh, but mm. we get access of the drugs from India and Bangladesh, which are way ahead of us. Mm. And mm. this is something very sad that we are not manufacturing it ourselves. But the tablets we are, but uh, like rituximab or, or Avastin and stuff, we don't. We do letrozole, small drugs, cytotoxics. These are being manufactured. That's interesting. Million new cases of the global can report in 2020 of new cancer cases, 
And obviously, with some of the challenges that you have enumerated, uh, despite the progress, we do know that collaborations, both internally and externally, play a role. Can we talk a little bit about the role that your international collaborations has played in advancing cancer care and research? And with some focus on the Union for International Cancer Control, which I believe have interacted with an, uh, uh, a member of the community. You see, the first thing we did was build up a society of medical oncology when we had a core group of members. It's a small society, but I think it's an effective society. And then we joined the UICC because we knew that we would get a lot of help from UICC. And despite being expensive, which is like, for us, it's very expensive to join it as a society. We still did it to get help from there to foster international collaborations and to see how the world is faring because you can't live in a well and not know what the outside world is like. So we had to do that. We, for research, uh, uh, we've joined the Asian Australian, uh, Asian Australia uh, clinical research uh, 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 thing where we teach our students how to train in clinical research, what should they do, how should they do it. And every year, because of limited amount of money, we send two or three uh, people, uh, students and mid-career oncologists to get training in stats, in clinical trials, how to do this and that. Then we have some international collaborations where we ask international faculty to come to Pakistan or over the Zoom, just like we're having a meeting today, uh, to look at and teach students and look at various things. We are planning to have an international general club, uh, uh, sorry, an MDT conference, which I'll invite you also, and uh, present cases, yes, present cases, mm -hmm. and get some international uh, people also on board so that we can learn how to do it. And we will tell them, ask them, what is the state of art? And this are, these are our limitations and how do we manage within these limitations to the best of our ability. And best, this is yes. how we are gradually de developing things. Developing gradually, yes. That's good, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah, we've also joined the SOHO. The, uh, uh, yeah. It's an international hematology society. And from okay. there, they, the SOHO, we, they, we present there in Turkey and we get invited there and we have our own presentations and then um, uh, we learn from them. So these are little ways in which we are improving ourselves and I think we are getting them. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe to Onka Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.